Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. I am Jillian Berry and today we have an awesome, awesome, awesome interview. We have the beautiful Jackie Waters. Um, I have been trying to get her on, chan on my channel for a very long time. I've had many amazing guests on my channel, many well-known people like Dan, McDon Dan McDonald, Mimi Kirk, um, John Kohler, so many awesome people. And I have wanted Jackie the most. So I am so excited. <laughs> she has had one of the biggest raw vegan transformation stories I have ever seen. So you guys are going to want to stick around to the end. We are going to talk about her before and after and so many amazing things. So let's get started. Jackie, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. Um, I feel really good. I'm excited. Um, I'm blushing because <laughs> that was really nice. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to share my story for anybody who wants to hear. Yeah. And you look amazing. You are so eye catching. Yeah. Like I said, like you have stood out to me the most, like no, everybody has a beautiful transformation and I love like all the guests I have on and hearing everybody's story, but your story has really stuck out to me. You have had such an oh. amazing transformation. So I would love to talk about what sort of started the transformation. What led you to raw? Um, yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. I, I sleep on the floor. Um, I've been doing that for about four years now. It's just really good for your alignment, especially when I was very heavy. I was almost 400 pounds. Um, you sink into the bed and it's, it's really bad for your spine. It's really bad for your lower back. Also your circadian rhythm. There are a lot of benefits, but I remember waking up on the floor of August 26th and my arms were numb and they wouldn't, I couldn't get feeling back into them for about 30 minutes. Um, and that was kind of normal, but not for that long for me. Um, and then also I remember getting up, trying to shake it off, trying to get up and get shake it off. And my ankles, I couldn't stand up without it feeling like they were like snapping. It felt like, like they were like toothpicks. And I just remember being so scared because I personally don't, don't like going to doctors. I just have always had like a an issue with getting diagnosis and tests and whatever. And I remember taking, um, so I didn't know if I was pre-diabetic or not, but I know that that was like a thing and I was almost 400 pounds and eating baked foods every day. So I was just scared. And a year before that I had gotten my blood test, um, blood tested with one of those prick things. My mom has had diabetes and I just tried it just to see. Um, and I was pre-diabetic and it, it scared me. And I had gone a year of eating baked foods and just eating for six. And then I wake up like this and I was just terrified that I might lose a limb or whatever. And I had already been raw vegan before, but this was a really big wake up call for me to, to clean my health. Cause I, I know that no matter what I get diagnosed as the only way to truly heal is by eating properly, moving your body and allowing your body to clean itself out. And that's what I did that day. I went into a raw vegan group and just posted, does anybody want to go raw vegan with me today? I want an accountability buddy. And um, Shelda messaged me and she was like, let's do it. I don't know how old she is, but she lives in Australia and we just messaged each other every day and checked in and it was just beautiful. And I, I went, I went hard that day and kept going and like it makes me want to cry because I was really, really heavy and scared. I'd never been that big in my life, but I've always like been yo-yoing, but I was almost 400 pounds. Wow. So. And where do you think you'd be right now if you didn't discover this path? Um, I used to watch the show, my 600 pound life. And I felt like I was going to be there. Definitely. Wow. I was eating like for six people. I would take a mixing bowl and eat that amount of food each time I ate and just till I literally have had to go to the hospital before from stuffing myself so much that I didn't know what was wrong and I couldn't stand and I, they just said I overate wow. I had 14 sandwiches and didn't know what was wrong wow so yeah well yeah, you are such I, an inspiration to so many yeah. people so I mean it's absolutely you. incredible and you look so amazing like so Thank amazing you. I just love you and adore you and oh. Did you meet somebody that like, what made you think raw? Like, like when you're in those oh. dark times, like who did like somebody reach out to you and say, try raw? Like, how did you discover that? That's a great question. Um, so 
I was already vegan. I had been vegan for five years for the animals. I was, you know, I didn't even know if I was going to be healthy eating vegan food. I just didn't want to contribute to slaughter anymore because I wouldn't do that myself, just personally. Um, but I was watching a bunch of videos on how to eat better just because I wasn't feeling the greatest. And I saw Dan McDonald, the life regenerator, and he had this one video about mucus and how to get rid of it. He was like making a juice with um, like grapefruit juice and orange juice and lemon juice and putting it all together. And he was like, he said something that really like hit me. He's like, you know, if you, if you want to do this, then you need to do it and you need to be all in. Like you, I don't want to coach somebody that doesn't, I've never talked to him before. So he didn't coach me, but it felt like a coaching session in that video. He said, I don't coach people that aren't, aren't all in. Like, I'm not going to do the work for you. You need to want this. And if you want it, your body will heal. And I went raw um it was like four years ago I did it for a few months and and did a lot of healing but I got scared I lost my I lost my focus and but I ended up going back to it that's what made me want to go back to it because I knew that that was the truth and sometimes you know it's not even about whether or not you know it's going to work it's I was afraid of healing there was a part of me that was afraid of healing like I've had a lot of trauma in my life I've been abused a lot and my weight has been a protector for me. I, it made people not look at me. I was sexualized when I was younger. And when you realize that that's probably why you don't want to heal. And that's sometimes why you eat a lot. Mm -hmm. It's easier to let go of that fear because now I'm in charge of myself. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm capable of protecting myself and we don't deserve to perpetuate those negative cycles just because of what happened to us when we were younger, mm -hmm. you know? And I wouldn't be the same person I am today if I wasn't in that position. So I'm thankful that I get to find these people that inspire me, like Dan McDonald, um, John Kohler, mm -hmm. Fully Raw Christina. I already had these books and it really helped me to realize this new journey that I'm on. And Absolutely. yeah, it's important. And when you transitioned, did you go cold turkey or did you do like raw till four or like what, what, what transition worked for you? Um, I did it that day. It really yeah. helps me to like throw away everything or donate everything that, that doesn't work for you anymore. And it feels like that is you telling yourself that like you're in it. And I bet on myself that day. And that's what I did. Yeah. And that's great. Have the, were the cravings intense or do you still deal with cravings or do you have any tips for people who, I know a lot of people have a hard time because they start doing the diet and it's really hard because of the cravings or because their family members don't eat raw or things like that. So how have the cravings been for you in the beginning and even versus now? That's perfect. Um, what really, really helped me is throughout my life, I've tried to understand, I don't like taking medications. Like I said, but I have a lot of issues. Like I've had um, depression, OCD, PTSD, ADHD. It really helped me to understand the body's chemistry to understand why those things were happening because I don't believe that they just happen. They happen because of something that happened to you in your life and it's your body's way of coping with it and reacting to that situation. But it's actually a, a physical thing too. Your body either releases these chemicals in huge form, in huge, huge amounts or doesn't and you respond based on those reactions. Um, and that helped me research the, the gut microbiome and how important it is to, it's our second brain. Mm -hmm. So what really helped me is that when I'm eating these raw foods, I'm feeding the good bacteria that isn't very strong in my body at that point. When I was 400 pounds, that good bacteria wasn't really there. It was mostly the bacteria that wants fat, sugar, salt, flour, you know, all those processed foods that help those thrive. But keeps me from thriving. So what I just told myself, if I ever had any of those moments of, oh my gosh, I want that food. It's like, you have to decipher whether or not it's you that wants that food or the bacteria that you're trying to rid your body of. So I, I love Harry Potter. So I picture um, those bad bacteria as like dementors. Like I'm just trying to rid them of my body and they're going to have a, a physical manifestation in my body because they're fighting to live. Just like I'm fighting for my life. And who's going to win? You get to decide who's going to win that. And it's not going to be the easiest, but I always had smoothies ready. I always had like everything that I needed to make smoothies. I always had, um, I say had, cause I'm eating differently now, but, mm -hmm. um, I always have everything that I, everything that I love. I have like five meals that I love 
and I make sure to have everything that I need for those meals. So in those moments when I'm feeling really like triggered, it's usually an emotional trigger, boredom. Um, I have everything ready to make what I need to make. And I allowed myself to have anything that I wanted as long as it was raw mm -hmm. at first. That's and then I realized place. the body, yeah, the body regulates itself. You end up not wanting to binge as much. You end up not needing to binge as much once you feed those good bacteria. So just having the faith in my body that I was going to change as long as I stayed consistent with it really helped. Mm -hmm. I also didn't force myself to work out at first. Mm -hmm. And the foods yeah. you've created, like you're, to me, your foods are up there with the top in the world. When I see the foods you post, I think oh. they're the most up there with the most beautiful raw vegan foods I have ever seen. So when I know you're working oh. on a book, I can't wait to have you back when your book comes out. Cause you were just, were you always so creative with these foods or you learned this over the years, I guess being raw. Um, I did take like four years of cooking classes. I've always loved food. <laughs> Um, because that is my, my number one coping mechanism um, was food. So I just found a way to have fun with my raw foods and still enjoy the process of creating. Um, but the plating that I do now wasn't always there. I didn't care about how my food looked when I was eating garbage, but just seeing all the colors, it made me want to feel like I was painting with my food. And mm -hmm. I love, I love making food. It's like and an that art. journey for me was so important. The the eating whatever I wanted as long as it was raw was so, so vital to my transition because I'm a fruitarian now, but it was so vital because you allow for the detox because I was 30 years eating animals and, you know, that's, that's a lot of, and then prescriptions and when I was younger, just a lot of detox and that transition was very important for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited to release that book because for anybody on the journey, it's, it's just, it's, it's so fun to have fun with your food. And yeah. Yeah. And I think that could help a lot of people the way you transition, just having like whatever you want, as long as it's raw. Yeah. 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 And it when really you happened. transitioned, um, okay. So what, how were you eating typically right when you transitioned, what were you typically eating in a day? Um, I would always start out with a smoothie just because I feel like that's one of the easiest things to eat or fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, if I had fruit, but I really love smoothies. Um, I would just take, I, from Costco, a bunch of frozen fruit and mix it with some greens or um, like I have, um, I think it's health force, spirulina manna and chlorella manna. Um, yeah, putting that in there. Some Irish sea moss. I like to fuel my cells. I like to feel like I'm fueling my cells. So it feels like there's a bigger purpose rather than just eating. Um, visualizing it differently really helped me to carry more about what I ate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so what were the biggest changes you noticed from pre raw to being raw? Like when you transitioned to raw, what were the biggest benefits? I'm sure you noticed like other benefits besides the weight loss as well. Yeah. Lower inflammation. My joints stopped hurting. Um, my skin was clearing up. I've always had like pretty clear skin, but I've, I've also had like, um, I don't know what it's called. Like like psoriasis or something where my hair is like, it's not like dandruff, but it's something dry. Like it's, it's, it's dry and red. It's uncomfortable. Um, that went away. Um, no body odor. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's weird, but no, it, I experienced the same girl, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even wear deodorant anymore. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. I feel like I, I don't know, just more energy. I feel like I wake up differently. I wake up feeling just more energized and just thankful. I feel like my brain works better. Um, no depression. I mean, even if I'm like sad, I feel like I, I want to feel all my colors. Like I quit smoking cannabis. A lot of my coping mechanisms are gone because I don't feel like I have to cope as much. And if I do, it feels more natural to just feel it all and allow it to flow. Mm -hmm. It's not as overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And have yeah. you noticed spiritual benefits as well? Oh, for sure. I, I, I feel like before I've never been like super religious. I did grow up in the church, but, um, I ended up straying from my thoughts on that, but, you know, learning about how my body works and just the beautiful way that our bodies can communicate to us. If we listen, it really helped me realize like what God is to me. Um, it feels like I'm listening and that I'm, I'm flowing. I'm allowing God to flow through me when I actually pay attention and it just feels more special. It feels like 
I'm not even allergic to the sun anymore. That was a huge one. I keep forgetting about that because I don't know how I forgot about that, but I literally couldn't be in the sun for more than 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. And I would be just full of hives three hours later. It was just insane. And since I went raw and ended my juice fast, um, I don't have any more allergies to the sun. I can sit in the sun for hours and it's wonderful. It wow. feels like that's, that's God too, to me, like allowing myself to, to fully heal is allowing myself to feel God. In Absolutely. A way. Now that you say that I was allergic to the sun too. I just remembered when you said that I forgot about that. Also. Yeah. And yeah. we forget because yeah. it's now natural. It feels like that was the most unnatural part of my life. And now I just, I love the sun. I love Me it. too. It's so natural. Yeah. You need it. And it's like, it's, uh-huh. so, it's all about the microbiome too. Like what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 It's huge. It's huge. And, and no doctors could ever fix that for me mm-hmm, you know they exactly. always just said don't go in the sun you can only be in the sun for 10 minutes that's yeah that's terrible it's like I love no, the sun, that's, so. it's like that's not natural for people to be allergic to the sun you know what I mean you yeah know, it makes you think yeah. like I when I was too I didn't even think about it so what about relationships like you had such a such a drastic transformation um were the people around you supportive of this transformation did some people treat you differently did the relationships shift and change or um, that's a good question. I, I've always been kind of like a hermit, not really. I'm open about everything, but in my yeah. real life, like I, I run a micro sanctuary. So I have a lot of animals at my house and, you know, I, I have my family and everything, but this started during the lockdowns. So since it's happened, I've really only had my online community and they've been nothing but supportive. Um, Amazing. But my family, I mean, at first they weren't eating raw at all. And it was just, I mean, still they really aren't. Um, but I feel like it's its made a positive impact on the way people are are seeing their food and eating a little better. My mom did a juice fast, wow. which was beautiful. Yeah, she did 85 days. I did 75. Wow. Whoa. Oh, your mom. That's amazing. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, sorry, how yeah. long did you juice cleanse for? 75 days. You did 75 days. Wow. And when did you do yeah. that? You didn't do that right when you transition, right? Cause I know some people do it right when they transition before going raw. So you did it after being raw. Yeah. I'm thankful that I did it after. I mean, I've already done, like I did a 19 day water fast the last time I was raw. And I feel like that cleaned out a lot. I think it's really important when you're on this journey, especially if you have a lot of healing like me, um, you don't necessarily have to be even overweight, but we can carry up to, I think it's like 30 pounds of, of excess stuff in your in your intestines in your intestinal Mm -hmm. tract so I think it's really important to to do it in spurts like I picture it like um like a pressure cooker if you've ever used a pressure cooker like you have to like let the pressure out and you can do it all at once but it'll like it'll it'll be overwhelming overwhelming steam overwhelming sound like sometimes even sputtering but if you do it little by little it's not overwhelming at all and I think that a lot of people go so hard at the beginning and maybe don't stick with it because it is so intense. So for me, I started 90 days after I went raw. I did my juice fast, but that's also because I I'm a baller on a budget and I couldn't afford a better, a better juicer. Yeah. Um, the juicer I have is amazing, but it's not very good for greens. So with the juice fast, it's important to do the, the lemon ginger blast. And I want yeah. to be able to and afford it. You found a lot of benefits from the juice cleanse. You're glad you did that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, even just uh, when I was raw for 90 days, like I'm not saying I wouldn't have rid myself of the allergy to the sun if I just continued going raw and just kept that going, but it speeds it up and it yeah. speeds up a lot of the healing. I, the allergies in general. Um, yeah. Just the mental clarity. I think everybody should do a juice fast if they haven't. Yeah. 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 And did you remove mm-hmm. any mucoid plaque or did you try to, or no? Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, started on day 10. <laughs> I did the, um, the psyllium husk and clay day 10. All, some came out all of this, all the way to day 70, 70. Isn't it? You're supposed wow. to do it five days, five days before. Yeah. I had a lot of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. I lost like four pounds on the juice fast and you're pounds? having like 2000, 2000 to 2200 calories a day. So it's not like I was losing, like, I don't know. I just felt like I was losing all the excess stuff that was still stuck in me. 
Yeah. You must've felt so good. Did you feel so good? Yeah. I felt incredible. I felt incredible. Yeah. Wow. And you stay hydrated. You have energy. It's very different than a water fast. I really, really, really recommend it to anybody that yeah. hasn't. And good for you. You did 19 days on a water fast. How was that? Did you just yeah. do that on your own or did you like have a coach or go somewhere or how was that? No, that was on my own. Wow. I, I sometimes do things that I probably like I probably should have, I didn't even know about mucoid plaque when I did it the first time. And I got terrified because you'll get mucoid plaque with doing a water fast too. Mm-hmm. Um, I got that out. Some of that just out. on the water, like without any psyllium yeah. husk or bentonite clay. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Distilled water. I did a distilled water fast and you'll get it out there too. It's just not as much. And I, I, if I had known about it, I probably would have gone longer, but I didn't know about it. It scared me. I started crying. It felt like tremors. Like I was terrified. So I stopped and just yeah. juiced after that. Wow. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. I also did recently you... did a 25 day water fast, but nothing came out. Wow. Oh yeah. I remember that. Wow. And how yeah. did you break your water fast? I've heard that people have to be very careful. I've heard that oh, break very the water careful. fast with citrus, they can die. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that. I just know that it has to be really watery. It has to be really yeah. watery. Um, I just did it with watermelon. Um, I've always heard that's the best way it's electrolytes. I don't know. It just felt right. Um, and then you have to, you have to refeed properly for at least half the time that you did the water fast. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. with being raw, how long have you been raw now? Um, I don't, I think it's like since August 26th of 2020. So I think it's like yeah. 540 something days. I wow. Yeah. And do you see yourself staying raw or like, do you ever, do you ever like see yourself going back to the old lifestyle? No. But I think it's really important to note that uh, about three months ago, I went through a lot of devastation with my, my boy. I don't have any human children, Mm -hmm. but my dog Cheeto, um, got really sick. Um, I also got sick. I don't know what I got sick with because I don't test myself. I just stayed home and did the healing, but I ended up eating cooked foods for about two months, cooked foods with raw foods. And I did not feel good. Mm -hmm. I felt I felt like I was spiraling. I felt like it was an important thing though, because it reminded me that this is my life. You know, this is the life I want. And, you know, I was last summer, I rode from Tacoma to Seattle. I don't know if you know where that is, but 50 miles, it's like 50, 55 miles on my bike five times. And I wouldn't be able to do stuff like that. If I was still eating the food that I ate, I was doing it raw. And you don't have any recovery time. Like your, your body heals like incredibly. I've never done anything like that. And I didn't feel any pain afterwards. So Mm -hmm. it keeps making me want to go back. And now I'm back in, and I, I whittled even further. I'm fruitarian now and I feel incredible. I still have my greens. I still have my algae and fruit. Yeah. You know, I've had, I've had Eli Martyr from the free melon society. I've become close friends with him. He's fruitarian. I've had him on. Yeah. He's amazing. So when I first met him, like, I didn't know what to expect because you think fruitarians, maybe they don't look as healthy or whatever. And he looks amazing in person is absolutely unbelievable. His skin, he has the best aura of anybody I've ever been around. Like, so how is the fruitarian experience for you and what led you to that? And do you feel a lot better fruitarian versus eating like all the variety of raw foods? I thought the same thing that you thought. I thought that, you know, with fruitarianism, you you weren't going to feel as healthy. You weren't going to get everything that you needed. But what really solidified it for me was hearing about Brian Mirabella. I don't even know where I found an interview of his. One night I was watching it and he's fruitarian. He's been fruitarian for about five years and he eats fruit and phytoplankton. And that really helped me realize that you can get, it feels like the, the best way to stimulate living in the wild in optimal conditions. Obviously we can't really live in the wild now. I mean, you could, but you can't drink from rivers like we probably used to be able to. And the phytoplankton is in rivers or or just natural water. And um, it has everything you need, all the omegas, um, every nutrient you need. And then the fruit fuels your cells and your brain. And Mm -hmm. he's jacked. He barely even works out and he's like ripped. Wow. So, I mean, it sold me and it feels right. I feel my best without any nuts and seeds. Um, and I did try having like, um, some salads with just no dressing and cabbage and carrots. It just doesn't feel as great. I just really mm. prefer the fruit. And right now I'm doing Irish sea moss, um, as well. 
I feel amazing. And I've, I've only been doing it for 11 days. I'm on the 11th day and I'm already down 12 pounds. I'm not even trying. Wow. Wow. Really working out. Yeah. And I don't think I asked if you don't mind sharing how much weight total have you lost since before you were raw to now? And if you As don't want to today, share, it's okay. No, it's fine. As of today, I'm, I'm open about it. I think it's yeah. really important to share. Um, as of today, I'm down 170 pounds. Wow. Um, with my water fast, I was down 185, but that was a water fast and you have to expect you're going to gain some weight back. But, um, I also gained some weight back when I ate cooked foods. So now I'm back on the right track. I feel incredible. I feel, I feel motivated to get up and do yoga out of nowhere. And mm -hmm. that's, that to me is the best thing is realizing that I can do that now. And yeah, I feel great. I feel amazing. Amazing. I'm not trying to weigh myself, but I want to know how much I'm releasing and to make sure that what I'm doing is helping my body reach homeostasis as it should. And as yeah. it will, I know. Yeah. It will. And do you feel like the living foods diet has put you more in alignment with who you are and with your purpose? Mm -hmm. I really do. And, and I almost started crying because I listened to this. Um, it's not a podcast. It's like a Spotify playlist, but fearless motivation. And one of theirs is, is, you know, most people don't actually make goals for themselves, maybe because they don't believe they can, or they don't realize that they haven't. But if your goal is like, I want to succeed, like, that's awesome. But do you have like an actual way of how you want to succeed? Even if it's, even if it's just, I want to heal, I want my body to, you know, release all the energy because a lot of our emotions are, are stored in our bodies. And a lot of the traumas that I've dealt with in my past are stored in my body. And that's what I want to eradicate. I want to feel freedom from anything that's happened to me in the past, any bad decision that I've made and, and reverse that and with nature, knowing that I can. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what my future holds for me because it keeps changing. Um, like, like the raw foods, I didn't know that I loved making raw foods and preparing them and taking pictures of them. Like I, I love it. Um, I also love gardening. Um, I love yoga now. New things are, are blooming in my life. And I'm just excited to see where it goes. Just allowing my body to heal. I picture myself doing, I don't know, yoga at the top of mountains and just helping other people realize that we don't have to be stuck in our past. You know, we don't mm -hmm. have to be stuck in the limitations that we've set for ourselves. You know, we have no limits if we don't mm -hmm. want them. If we don't, mm -hmm. if we realize that we don't need them. Absolutely. Well said. And have you experienced, I know a lot of people can experience whether they transition raw or they're on a cleanse intense, emotional detox. And that can be really hard when I've done cleanses. That's been the hardest part. And these traumas come up and cause you can't run away to the foods anymore. Right. So yeah. how have you dealt with those, that, that part of things? And would you, do you have any advice for anybody who might be going through that? Yeah, I share a lot on my profile. I think that helped a lot is just opening up to whoever wants to listen about what I'm going through. Um, I did quit smoking cannabis. I smoked cannabis since I was 15 every single day. And that was, that made the journey even more raw because I couldn't just escape in laughing. <laughs> um, but I feel like my favorite thing now is to feel those emotions and to actually sit with them. And I'm doing parts work now. Um, I actually have an, a meeting after this um, that I've been doing every two weeks. And I think it's really important to understand the parts of our lives that have developed, the parts of our, our brains that have developed from what we've experienced and sitting with them and nurturing those feelings instead of running from them. Because I think most people are conditioned to run from them. And for me, sitting with those emotions validates everything that I've been through and makes me realize how strong I am. You know, it, it's not exactly the, the most fun thing to experience, but sometimes it's, it's good to cry. Sometimes it's good to, to realize how strong you are from what you went through. So it is, and there's I, nothing, I feel like it's a blessing. Yeah, it is. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with crying and having like angry days and sad days. You know, I feel like so yeah. many people think if you're feeling like that, something's wrong with you, but we're here having a human experience and that's what makes us up and it's okay and normal to feel that way. You know? Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's the most important thing is realizing that it is totally normal. It is totally normal. Like sometimes when Cheeto died, it took me weeks to even be able to talk to anybody. I mean, wow. that's, it is what it is. You know, mm -hmm. I worked through it. I, I went on walks. I talked with myself. I just tried to get through it. And that's all you can do is be, be there for yourself mm -hmm. during those moments. 
Yeah. Cause I feel like some people will transition to raw and they will be having like super emotional days and they will think something's wrong with me. I'm not feeling like super high vibe, happy, like some of these YouTubers I'm mm-hmm. watching or something like this, but they don't realize all the YouTubers they're watching have bad days too. And they can get through those emotional times. Like some of it's detox, some of it's just real life, but I feel like the diet just better equips you to handle the things that come your way. Do you feel the same way? Oh, for sure. I think that the most nourishing way, because I also, I also am really hard on myself if I don't eat what I wanted, like for those, those few weeks that I was not on my best path. Um, I was really hard on myself. And that's another thing is when I realized like, why am I doing that to myself? I don't deserve, I don't deserve to feel like this. I don't deserve to make my body feel like this, you know, but it's also normal to go through these things and I don't need to keep suppressing it mm-hmm. to, to nourish your body is the, the most the, the best form of self-love, in my opinion, the, at mm-hmm. least the beginning form of self-love, whatever comes after that, you know, comes from that. But I think the start of it is to, to nourish your body and yeah. get yourself through it. Yeah. yeah. And it is like, you really treat yourself with self-love when you do that. And then I feel like you attract more people in circumstances that treat you like that as well. Yeah. And I think it's important too, that people share their, their hard, hard times. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes it's embarrassing, but I mean, I even shared that I was scared to heal. I think mm-hmm. saying that out loud to anybody who's willing to listen is really important. I think we also show that that we're fluid beings. We're always changing and we're never defined by any single moment. I always tell myself that. And I think that's important that even if in one moment you feel sloppy and sad and depressed, you're not going to stay that way. Everything's always changing. So finding the comfort in that, you also help comfort other people. And I mm-hmm. think that's important to not only show the highlight reel, to, mm-hmm. to be real in the situation. So people know what to expect because it's, it's, it's hard, but I think it's harder to suppress it and suppress it, suppress it, suppress it, and end up being almost 400 pounds. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't gain weight, you end up with a lot of toxins in your body that you just don't deserve. You know, mm-hmm. you know? a lot of my family isn't very healthy and I want to be healthy when I'm 80. Mm -hmm. I want to be like Chef Babette or Mimi Mm -hmm. Kirk. I want to be, you know, living my life and enjoying every moment without having to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing it for future Jackie too. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Future Jackie. I can't wait to see the future Jackie because look what you do now. And everybody, I'm so excited. you guys have to follow Jackie. I will link all of her stuff below. Definitely go follow her. She has one of the most inspiring pages ever. And Thank you. I want to ask Thank too, you. if you don't mind, because people will probably comment down below and ask if you don't mind sharing what your age is. I'm 35. Wow. I'm you, to be 36. Amazing. And you must feel yeah. such a difference in your energy levels when you had the extra weight before versus now. Oh, right. Yeah. I used to sleep. I mean, when I had the extra weight, I also smoked every day. Not, I'm not condemning cannabis because some people it's beautiful medicine for them. But for me, mm-hmm. I stopped doing everything at 3 PM and wanted to just sleep all day. And like I said, I, I could picture myself on my 600 pound life and that's not, I was scared. I was mm-hmm. really scared and we don't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. You know, we deserve to love ourselves and go through whatever we need to go through to get to a healing space. And I feel wonderful. You know, I feel like I, I I love wearing clothes now. I love doing my makeup. I love going out. I didn't used to like being even seen. So we deserve to have the sunshine on us. We deserve to have people smile. We deserve to help people smile. And I'm just really excited. I'm excited for the future. Amazing. And how long exactly have you been vegan for? A long Um, time. I went vegan July 2nd on my birthday of my 30th birthday. So it's five years, almost six, yeah. almost six years. Yeah. And I know so, like some people will come on my channel and be like, they'll comment. You will not last. No vegans last. It's a deterioration diet. I mean, for me, I'm into my sixth year this year and I'm absolutely thriving. I feel amazing. I think if you do it right, it absolutely works. So what yeah. would you say to somebody who says like the vegan diet doesn't work long-term you're going to deteriorate. Um, and also do you take supplements or what are your views on supplements? That's a great question. Um, for one, I would say, I don't really like that. Like the term vegan to me is the ethical standpoint. Um, what you eat doesn't really matter in that, in that mindset. But when you talk about health wise and how something's going to last, really all you have to focus on is, are you getting your amino acids? Are your cells hydrated? Is your body set up to be 
functioning properly based on what you're eating? Are you creating clogged, mm -hmm. a clogged system? Are your elimination pathways working properly? Because really all that matters is that. So vegan or not, if you're not fueling your cells and you're not helping your elimination pathways flow, then you're not going to do well. Yeah. No. So yeah. vegan or not, you can eat, you can eat really unhealthy food being vegan. I was almost 400 pounds as vegan. I mean, I'm not demonizing the way people eat if that's what they choose to eat, but I would just question what do your amino acids look like? Cause mm -hmm. that's really all our bodies need. People Good ask point. me where I get my protein. I'm like, every plant makes amino acids come from plants. So mm -hmm. even if you get protein from an animal, it came from the plants that they ate. So I'd rather not filter my nutrients through somebody else's body. Mm -hmm, me too. <laughs> Ethical or not, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I know a lot of people, when they do the diet, they say, I feel hungry all the time. Has that been an issue for you? Or have there been any, any foods or tricks along the way that you've found to sort of make you feel full? Um, that's a great question. Um, when I ask myself that question, sometimes it has to do because I have an eating disorder. I mean, I, I still do. I would say it, you, you're always going to have an eating disorder if you've had an eating disorder. Um, I would always question whether or not I actually am hungry or if I'm bored. Most time it's just boredom. Mm -hmm. um, so what really helped me is using chronometer to track my nutrients, tra track my calories. And if I know that I'm getting what I'm supposed to get, then I'm not really hungry. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that really helps me right now is I always keep dates, bananas, and mandarins in my car. Um, so that no matter if I'm at home or on the go, I always have what I need and know that, you know, a banana's roughly a hundred calories. Um, the mandarins are good for water, you know, liquid and the dates are just good calories too. They're like 66 calories a date. I just know that I'm getting what I need to get. So yeah. And the preparation is so key like that. Like you said, having stuff in the yeah. car, you've really got to be prepared because the food yeah. digests so fast. Right. And if people are just mm -hmm. transitioning, you need a lot more than you think. So yeah. 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 I also got a lot of, um, Pyrex containers to carry my food wherever I need to go. I think thinking about it beforehand is key. You want to think about it the night before. Um, I also set reminders on my phone with this app called I am affirmations. Mm, I have that. Your own. Yeah, I have that. I listen to those yeah. two every day up. That's the best. I app. love it so much. Yeah. yeah. And you can make your own. They don't even have to be affirmations. Yeah. I just have this thing telling me like Queens eat raw food. I, yeah. I deserve to eat raw living <laughs> energy. It. Like I am a queen and I, I love, love it. A queen. Yeah. It's wonderful. And I think it's free. Maybe it I is. I think it's but free it too. Has a widget. You, I have like five widgets on my phone from that app that just remind me on every single page of my phone that, you know, something, something important and reminding me of my, my truth. Because I think, you know, we have certain times of the day in the morning, we're always like super jazzed, super ready to do whatever we want to do. But when we get tired or stressed, you know, you end up, maybe not doing something you want to do, or maybe feeling like you need to rush to something quick in the microwave. But if you have those reminders from yourself, from your highest self, then it's a lot easier to stay with what you want. I think. Mm -hmm. And really I think the, me. the, I am app, I love that because they say <laughs> like, really, when you listen to things repetitively over and over, it really does help train your subconscious mind too. So yeah, I listen to that's things. That's what we for, need. Yeah. yeah. We need I to agree. reprogram our brains. Cause if you think about it, every time you watch TV, you're being programmed with mm -hmm. whatever they want you to eat, the garbage food. I mean, they have a lot invested in that garbage food mm -hmm. and they make you think it's food. And if we reprogram our brains, we allow ourselves to, to dictate what, what the actual reality is. And I had to re reprogram my brain. I had yeah. to be yeah, absolutely. That's why I think it's so important to surround yourself with positive people. And I get it. Yeah. Like sometimes your friends will have bad times and you'll have like some bad days and bad things you yeah. have to talk about, but mostly like to listen to positive things, watch positive YouTubers and like, you know, mm -hmm. cause yeah, we're all just taking it in, you know, subconsciously. Yeah. yeah. It's so important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We eat with so much more than our mouths. We eat with our eyes. We eat with our ears. You know, we, we eat with a lot more than we think. So and true. Yeah. And I'm wondering, has, have there been a few things maybe you've learned along the way? Like say, if you say versus when you first started raw compared to now, is there anything looking back you would do differently that maybe could help somebody out? Like a few lessons or things you've learned along the way? I would do less nets. Less I nuts. still, yeah. And soak them. It's very important to soak them beforehand because otherwise yeah. your body can process them very easily. It's way easier to eat them 
you know, just from the jar, but soaking them is important. It helps you, helps them, I think that it, it helps them break down an enzyme that inhibits you from digesting it properly or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, look it up, but I know that that, that is something I wish I would have done. Um, but I am glad that I went through the phases that I went through because even allowing myself at the weight that I was allowing myself, whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, I still dropped weight like crazy and felt good doing it. I felt like I would even have like raw cheesecake in my freezer at all times and would have mm -hmm. a piece anytime I wanted, you know, mm -hmm. and that is just, it was wonderful for me. At and you time. were still losing weight doing that, right? Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. And, yeah. and not only that, I only had to have one piece. I think that is so important is that even somebody with an eating disorder, you end up regulating yourself when you eat proper foods and you only feed the good bacteria because you don't have the excess bad bacteria in your body feeding you these signals to eat all this garbage and excess, you know, you're eating for them too. A lot of people don't realize that when no. we have parasites in our bodies, worms in our bodies I know. that are really there. Yeah. They're there. And they literally communicate to our brains and Absolutely. it's very hard to, to ignore if you don't realize that's, that's what's happening. Yeah. That was another thing the juice, juice cleanse did is, is it rids you of a lot of that. And did you use a coach at all anywhere along the way when you went raw or when you juice cleansed or you did it all through your own thing and your own research? Yeah. Shane Sterling. Yeah. I got in that raw vegan or uh, I forget what it's called. Raw vegan heroes. I'm not in it anymore. Yeah. Raw vegan heroes. It was yeah. wonderful. Um, I think it's important to have a community of people to mimic. Cause I feel like I'm like a mimic octopus. Mm -hmm. I feel like I do things based on what I see. And then I just, I reenact it in my own body. It, it feels almost, I don't know, but I think it's important to surround yourself with people doing the same thing. So you, you can adapt it for yourself. I think Absolutely. It's important. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more to have like the like-minded yeah. people around. It really helps you stay yeah. on track. And yeah. I forget, I forget if we talked about it, but when you transitioned and you were losing the weight and everything, were you exercising too? You said, or no, um, not at first. No, no. I waited yeah. until after my juice fast. And then I started, I don't really like exercising. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, riding my bike is exercising, but I love like riding my bike, roller skating, actual physical activities that don't require, like I go to, to a gym and like pump iron, like I'm gonna, I really want to get into like lifting weights and weightlifting, um, just to tighten up everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really just enjoy swimming, um, things that don't feel like working out, but mm -hmm. yeah, I bike a lot. I was doing like 400 to 500 miles a month and that just felt really good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I know yeah. you were saying like, you're, you know, you're more into the natural, not into like seeing doctors, but did you ever see a doctor when you were 400 pounds and then see one after you lost all the weight? Like, did you see the same doctor? And they were like, wow, Jackie, I wish I would have, Yeah, but I don't even remember the last time I went to a doctor. I, yeah. I, I don't remember just because when I went vegan, they kept telling me that I wasn't going to be healthy on vegan. Then I just, I couldn't trust what they were saying. I'm, I'm a very hard headed person when it comes to that, mm -hmm. because I know that vegan or not, like I said, if you're getting the right amino acids and you're getting what your body needs to thrive, there's it, whatever the diet's called that you're, you're going to do well on it. And when they told me that it just, it really turned me off. I, I couldn't take it seriously. So yeah. I wish I would have gotten, I got, I know I probably have some blood work from when I was like really heavy and eating meat and stuff, but I didn't, I didn't go to after I went vegan. Yeah. Once. Yeah. Well, yeah. and you have so many before and after that. photos. It's just what a transformation. I know. I'm so proud I wish of you. I would have had more pictures from before, but I really hated taking pictures of myself. And I think a lot of people have that issue. Um, I'm just really excited to see where it goes because I can already feel like going fruitarian, mainly fruits is, is, an even deeper level. Like I feel incredible. And I feel like Eli, Eli Martyr, he's so incredible. He's so seen incredible. His videos? Yes, yeah. He no, yeah. He, meet him in person. He, yeah. So yes. we've become close friends lately. He came over last week and brought me some persimmons. I've never tried persimmons and I tried them for the first time. They were absolutely so good. I'm sure you've tried They're them. So you? good. They yeah. I've so only good. tried them once, but I was scared before. I didn't know what they were, but now they're, they're, they're like, it's like a pie when it's like you're eating pie or something. It's incredible, but it's like pie. watching his videos has really helped me too. just 
realizing that you don't need what you think you need. And mm-hmm. his workouts just, wow. Just and he's incredible. a stunt man. He's a fruitarian stunt man. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I've do, I did a video. Videos. Yeah. I've done a couple of videos with him, which I will link below. Um, I don't know if the other one will be posted yet on the channel by the time I post this, but I'll post the other one, but yeah. And yeah, he brought the persimmons. I also tried egg fruit recently and, um, sugar apples. So like, what do you say to people who think like these diets are boring? Like, have you ever been bored on it? Or do you feel like it becomes more exciting all the time? I feel like right now I feel excited every day, but I know that so much it's winter here. So we, and I'm in Washington state. So we really only have apples and pears that are like local. Um, but I am so excited for what's to come. Cause when spring comes, we get like pluots and apricots and grapes. And I don't know what else melons. I'm just very excited. I think that seeing it this way and, and actually living it, it, you realize you, you get way more excited. Your taste buds get way more excited from the, the flavors. Like, I don't think that I tasted them as well when I was eating garbage food, you know, even yeah. food. Your taste buds taste as well. Yeah. Yeah. Your taste buds really change. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you're, so you're in Washington state. You're saying, yeah. Yeah. So in the States and Canada, you can get deliveries from Miami fruit. I, sometimes I get deliveries from them. I don't know if you've tried them. They're pretty expensive for delivery, but they have the best fruit I've ever had. So I want to send you a box. I'll send you a box today. So what? you can try some. Yeah. I'll send you a box. Oh, yeah. I haven't gotten it yet. I'm gonna. I, I, they're, they're expensive. No, I'll but you, box. you know, I have so many kids to take care of here. I, I, I run a micro sanctuary. So we have like chickens and cats and dogs and pigeons. And it's just, it, it's a lot, but you know, it's wonderful. I just don't really, that's wonderful. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Thank no, I'm happy you. to DM me your address after and I'll send it. To I'm her. excited. Yeah. I'm excited for you. You I, will appreciate I it. To. Yeah. yeah. They look so, incredible. What they yeah. send. Like what? They're- their fruits are unbelievable. Wow. That's exciting. So, that just yeah. made me super excited. Good. I'm so happy. <laughs> well, thanks so much for being on today. You've just been incredible. And as you know, I've wanted to have you on since I started my channel because you've stuck out to me as like the biggest, one of the biggest transformations in raw foods. And I think you're so oh. inspiring. And I feel like so many people can relate to so many of the things you say. So to end off, would you have anything to say to somebody who maybe wants to get healthier or wants to try raw, but they're struggling to sort of stick to it and maybe struggling to get over like the mental barriers in their mind or physically even. Um, yeah. Um, don't be afraid to feel your feels like, don't be afraid to feel every color. Um, don't limit yourself at first because your body will literally regulate itself. You'll stop wanting to eat like nine dates at a time. Um, don't limit yourself. I wouldn't limit any of the nuts or seeds either at first. Um, you'll start feeling and try to try to listen to your body. Try to listen to how you're feeling in the situation and always pack ahead, think ahead and maybe have an accountability buddy. It really helped. Sheldon really helped me just remember that I'm doing it. So an accountability buddy really helps and get into a raw community. Mm -hmm. I have like 14 raw vegan groups. So that really helps. too. (laughs) Oh, wow. That's amazing. I'm in like 14 of them. Yeah. 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 And Oh, one more thing. So I know we talked about the emotional detox, but I know a lot of people experience physical detox when they go raw. And sometimes they will say on my channel, like I'm eating so healthy, but I've, I am not looking good. I'm looking worse than ever. And like I'm experienced deterioration and there'll be like a month in three months in eight months in. So what do you say to people who are experiencing that? Do you have any tips or advice for people differentiating between detox and maybe something's wrong and they need to stop or, and also did you experience any of that? Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, we, our bodies are made up of these building blocks of what we're eating, whether or not people want to accept that or not. So when you're eating raw, you're going to be deconstructing the house that you built little by little, maybe even a lot of you know, at first and even during, like, I'm still experiencing detox. My skin isn't, I feel like it's really shiny right now, but I feel like you have to realize that you're rebuilding a house. And that is always a messy process. If anybody's gone through any type of construction, like you are going to experience detox. And a lot of people are not going to think you look great, but it's always just a manifestation of what you have eaten and not what you are eating. What you Mm -hmm. are eating is life is living energy. It's, it's everything your, your cells need. So all it is, is the things moving out of you. And if you don't like how it looks, you want to stick to 
eating raw food so you don't have to keep putting that into your body because that's mm-hmm. all it is. It never comes from eating grapes. You know, you're not going to have gross skin or gaunt a gaunt r- complexion because of fruits and vegetables. It's always going to be because of what you have eaten in the past. And that's just the reality of the situation. But if you stick with it, you'll mm-hmm. realize that you're shining and, and you, you continue to shine and you'll radiate that energy and it'll, it'll pass. Mm-hmm. It will pass. Mm-hmm. And you just have to wait for it and mm-hmm. accept that you've eaten that in the past. Yeah. yeah. And it can, I've heard it can take like seven years for our bodies to like fully for all of yeah. our cells and everything to rebuild and detoxify. It yeah. takes a long time. Like, I think we all just yeah. want a quick fix and you can't expect that when you've been eating maybe foods that weren't intended for your body for like three decades or something, you know what I mean? Which is what yeah. I did before too. I'm still, and it's not even just the food you've eaten. It's the medications you've taken, mm-hmm. the, the, the type that. of environment you've lived in, the type of water. I only drink distilled water. I'm not saying everybody has to, but pay attention to what's in your water. Some people have fluoridated water. Some people have, you know, if you're drinking tap water, like there's a lot of prescriptions in there that they can't filter out. So really think about more than just the food you're eating and Mm -hmm. make sure to get sunlight, make sure to do some grounding and work on your breath work because most people don't breathe properly. Yeah. 70, I think it's like 70 to 80% of our toxins are released through our breath. So just realizing, especially coming from a heavier body, I have to realize that my posture is different now and you have to account for that and, Mm -hmm. and work on your breath. You know, that's Mm -hmm. important. It's nice important to, to look at so much more than just the food. Yeah, but absolutely. It's important. Yeah. Well, you look amazing and you've just been radiating Thanks. in this interview and you've shared so Thanks. much amazing information as far as like tips and advice goes and just been so inspiring as far as your story goes. Thank so, you so much. I really am thankful to be here with you. I'm excited to meet you. I've never yeah, met you. Me too. Well, yeah. yeah. We've talked so much like online, but yeah, it's mm-hmm. amazing. Me too. Yeah. I feel like I know you, you know what I mean? Oh, did yeah. I? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, again, thanks so much. And I look forward to having you back on, like when you have your books and stuff, because I can't wait to help you promote that because I feel like your foods are just incredible. If you do move forward with your book or and yeah. sharing your story, everything. it is important. I really want to. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Thank thanks you. again. And to the viewers, I truly hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe. I create great videos every single week, just like this one. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you. Bye.